shortness of breath, but some may have mild disease. Having said that, we do know that there can be people that are truly asymptomatic and PCR positive. The second part of your question is what proportion of asymptomatic individuals actually transmit? So the way that we look at that is we look at, um, they need, these individuals need to be followed carefully um, over the course of uh, when they're detected and looking at secondary transmission. We have a number of reports from countries who are doing very detailed contact tracing. They're following asymptomatic cases, they're following contacts, and they're not finding secondary transmission onward. It's very rare. And that not, m much of that is not published in the, in the literature. From the papers that are published, there is one that came out from Singapore uh, looking at a long-term care facility. There are some household transmission studies where you follow individuals over time and you look at the proportion of those that transmit onwards. Um, we are constantly looking at this data and we're trying to get more information from countries to truly answer this question. It still appears to be rare that an asymptomatic individual actually transmits onward. What we really want to be focused on are, is following the symptomatic cases. If we followed all of the symptomatic cases because we know that this is a respiratory pathogen, it passes from an individual through infectious droplets. If we actually followed all of the symptomatic cases, isolated those cases, followed the contacts and quarantined those contacts, we would drastically reduce. I would love to be able to give a proportion of how much transmission we would actually stop but it would be a drastic reduction in transmission. If we could focus on that, I think we would, we would do very, very well in terms of suppressing transmission. But from the data we have, it still seems to be rare that an asymptomatic person actually transmits onward to a secondary individual.